Yo yo, welcome to lesson 19. Today, we're going to talk about interfaces. An interface is basically a description of all of the properties and functions that an object provides. For example, in the previous lessons, we created a class called shape, and we declared that all shapes have the properties length and width, and all shapes have functions to calculate the area and also the perimeter. So one way you can think about an interface is that it is very similar to writing a manual, where basically you're just telling the end users that if they create a shape object, they can grab the properties length and width, and they can also use the provided functions area and perimeter. If this doesn't make sense, don't worry, let me share a real life example. So let's imagine an ATM machine. When you insert your card, the screen will display a limited amount of options that you can make. If you look at this image, the machine only provides five options. So you can think of each option as a function, where basically it performs some sort of logic based on the option. And if you remember, in order to use a function in our code, we need to call that function. But what if I told you that on applications, when a button is tapped, it can call the function for you. So basically, when you build a website, an app, a video game, or any client-side application, all you're really doing is hooking up a button to a function. We will go into more details of how to hook up a UI to a function in a future lesson. But let what I just said sink in for a bit. Cool, so for today's lesson, let's build a mini shopping cart application. Cool, so I copied the code over from lesson 14. So basically we have a class called item and it has two properties, the name and the price. And we also have the function calculate total, which takes in a list of items and basically adds up all the prices together to return a total. So for our shopping cart, we will need a variable to keep track of all of the items inside the cart. So let's create a variable called cart and let's set it to empty list. Next, we will need to create two functions, one that allows us to add items to the cart and one that allows us to remove an item from the cart. We need to create functions because as an application, we want to limit what a user can do. So in order for a user to add items or remove items, they must call the functions that we have created. So let's start with adding an item. So I'm gonna create the function, define add to cart. And basically this will take an item and all it would do is cart.append item. Next, let's create the remove function. So define remove from cart, and this will take a index. And then inside here, we just do cart.pop index. Nice, so now we have three functions in total, add to cart, remove from cart, and also calculate total. Cool, so one thing that I want you to notice is that the add to cart and remove from cart function, they all depend on this cart variable that we created on line six. And the reason why we create these functions is so that way, the only way a user can add an item or remove an item is through these functions. But technically, we can still access this cart variable. For example, we can do cart.append, and here we can create an item, so let's call it Vincent, and let's put a price of $1,000. And let's add a print on the next line, so print cart, and now let's click run. Nothing happened. Oh wait, my spacing is off, so let's backspace these two lines. Um, and now let's click run and cool as you can see we got an object here, which is basically the item We can also use the add to cart function to do the same thing. So let's do that as well So let's do add to cart and let's add another item and let's call it Bob and let's make it five dollars And now let's click run and as you can see line 22 and line 23 both do the same thing But that's not what we want the user to do We want the user to use the function add to cart to add items obviously for this project It doesn't really do much harm but if we go back to the bank example, if the user has access to, let's say, a variable that contains their balance, they could potentially just do something like this. Balance plus equals $1 million, which would be a nice thing to do if we were hackers. But obviously, this is fraud and something that we don't want users to be able to do. So we can avoid this by creating an interface or basically an object. Cool. So now let's create an object called store. So class store. And now let's create the init. So define underscore underscore init underscore underscore self. And for our store, we want it to store a cart. So now let's move this cart inside of the init. So let's hit tab twice, one, two, and do self.cart equals empty list. And for the store, we want the function add to cart. So let's hit tab on this. And now let's add self here. And now to use the cart inside the object, all we have to do is add self. So now we do self.cart.append item. Cool, and now let's do the same for remove from cart. So let's hit tab, and now let's put self here, and also self here. And now let's add calculate total to this interface. So now let's hit tab, and now let's put self here. And since this object already has a cart, we can get rid of this cart parameter. And now in line 19, all we have to do is self.cart. Cool, so now let's hit backspace here to make our code look better. 
cool. So now let's create our store. So let's do store equals store. And now as you can see on line 24, we're calling cart.append, but now we don't have this cart variable anymore. So now if we want to add items to the cart, we have to use the store object. So now on line 24, we have to do store.add to cart. And now we also have to update line 25. So let's also do store.add to cart. And now on line 26, in order to print the cart, we have to do store.cart. So now let's click run. And as you can see, we got the same output. Nice. So now all of our code is bundled into one object, which is the store. And in order for users to add items, remove items, and to get the total, they must use our store object. However, we still have one problem. The cart variable is still exposed. So technically a user can just do store.cart.append and now we can add another item. So we can do item and let's call it bug and let's set the price to negative 10, which shouldn't be possible in an actual store. Uh, so now let's click run. And as you can see, the user was able to bypass our add to cart function by using the cart variable inside the store object. So since we have an interface, we can actually fix this problem. So with an interface, we can make properties and functions private. And what I mean by private is that no one can access these properties or functions outside of the object. So to make a variable or function private, all we need to do is add two underscores in front of the name of the variable or function. So on line eight, let's update this cart variable and make it private. So all we have to do is add two underscores here. So now this cart variable is private and we can only access this variable inside the object. So now inside the cart object, let's update every reference to the cart. So that way it uses the private cart variable. So let's copy this cart and update this one, this one, and this one. Cool, so now let's run our code and let's see what happens. So let's click run. So here, as you can see, we got an error. Attribute error, store object has no attribute cart. And it says that this error is on line 26. So on line 26, we try to append to the cart. So let's try using the private variable instead. So let's update this variable to have two underscores in front of it. So underscore underscore, and now let's click run. And as you can see, we've got the same error. So now this underscore underscore cart variable cannot be accessed outside the object. So now let's get rid of line 26 and let's click run again. And now we can't even print the cart. So now we need to create another function that can show us what is inside our cart. So let's create a function that will output the items inside the cart. So let's do define display cart and this will take in a self. And then all we're going to do here is just do a simple for loop. So for i in range zero to len self dot underscore underscore cart. And now let's put a colon. So now let's just print i and then let's do self dot underscore underscore cart. And now let's grab the item from the index. And now let's grab the name of the item. And now let's get rid of line 31. And now let's do store dot display cart. And now let's click run. And here, as you can see, we got two items in our cart, Vincent and Bob. Nice. So this is very powerful because now no one can have access to the cart variable. And the only way the user can add or remove items is through the provided functions from the store object. The goal of a private variable is to just prevent bad actors from doing unwanted actions. For example, earlier, we tried to add an item with a negative price, which doesn't make sense at all. Awesome. So now in order to make this project more fun, we can create a while loop to prompt the user to make an action. So first, let's display a message. So let's do print, hello, welcome to our store. And now I said enter. So let's do an infinite loop so that way we can keep prompting the user. So let's do while true and then colon and hit enter. And the first thing we want to do is just display the cart. So let's do store dot display cart and open the parentheses. And let's also display the totals and let's do store.calculate total. And now let's hit enter. And now let's print out a list of options that the user can make. So let's do print, press A to add item, print, press R to remove item, and also print, press X to exit. And next we just want to get the input. So let's do user input equals input and now let's open the parentheses and now let's give the user a prompt so let's just say please enter a command and now let's hit enter and now all we want to do is just check what the user inputted so we can do if user input equals equals x and put a colon and then hit enter and let's type break and basically what break does is it will exit the loop right away. So this is great for this scenario since we have a while true loop, which is an infinite loop. And the only way to break out of it is when the user enters an X. Cool. So now let's go to the next line and let's do L if 
user input equals equals a and that means the user wants to add an item so now we want to prompt the user for the name of the item and also the price so we can do item name equals input uh, please give the item a name and we can copy this line and paste it and now let's change this to price and since this is a price we should wrap this with an int so that way we can convert it to a integer and then let's change the prompt so please provide a price cool so now all we have to do is store dot add to cart and now we pass it an item where basically the item takes in a name so we can do item name and also price cool and then next we should do lf user input equals equals r and in this case we should just prompt the user for an index to remove from so we just do index equals int input and let's do please provide the index of the item to remove and then all we have to do is store dot remove from cart and now we just pass it the index and finally let's add an else case and let's just print please enter a valid input cool so now let's delete line 29 and 30 so that way we start with a fresh cart and now let's click run cool so as you can see it says hello welcome to our store and here are the commands that we can do so let's type a to add an item and now let's give it a name so let's do apple and let's give it a price of five dollars and here as you can see we have an apple at index zero so let's add another item so let's type a and let's put banana and now let's put 10 and here as you can see we have two items so now let's type r to remove and let's remove at index one so that should get rid of the banana and here as you can see we just got one apple and now let's type x to exit and now basically our program ended so before we end the lesson i just want to go over this code with you together so first we create the store and then we display the cart and then next we just say hello welcome to our store and then we start our while loop and here we use a true because we want to keep prompting the user for an input and you can kind of think of this as a video game where you basically select an option and after you're done you have more options to choose and once you hit exit that's when the program exits so on line 33 we basically displayed the cart so that's why you saw zero apple and one banana then we did store.calculate total so we should have saw the total show up as well but i forgot to put the print uh, next on line 36 to 38 we just show the user what commands that they can enter line 39 we prompt the user for the input and then from line 40 to 50 we basically just check the input and decide what we want to do so if the user enters an x we basically break which means we exit the loop and the program ends and then if we get an a we just grab the name and the price and then we add it to the cart and if we get an r uh, we ask the user for the index and then finally we just remove it from the cart and then else if the user gives us an invalid input we will basically just ask them to enter a valid input and then from there we go back to line 33 and we just repeat everything again cool just a quick note there may be bugs in this code for example on line 44 uh, we're expecting an integer so the user can enter anything they want and if it's not a number this might break the code and also on line 47 the user can also give us an invalid index but i think that's something that you can figure out for homework but yeah feel free to drop a comment below if you have any questions but please do let me know what you think about this series and whether you're actually learning or not and cool and basically in 19 lessons we basically learned the basics of python and now we create a simple project that we can put on our resume. Super exciting, super awesome. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that you guys learned something new today. We're definitely going to learn more things in the future. So make sure to hit the like and subscribe so that way you don't miss out on any new content.